to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, I remember when I was in social studies class in Waco, Texas. I had moved there my very end of my junior year in high school from Surf City, USA, Santa Cruz, California. And I just remember how boring the teacher was. It was the first class after lunch. I could hardly keep my eyes open, and she was the blah, 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 you see in the Charlie Brown uh, TV shows. And something happened to me that moment that I guess is similar to when I hear people talk about them receiving a priestly calling. But for me, it was like all of a sudden the universe opened and I understood in a cosmic way and in an eternal way, in a spiritual way, that I could actually be a father. And it blew my mind. The, the, the thought of being married and being in love, that wasn't the point of the, um, the, uh, this, this awesome experience. It was that... I could actually bring a being that would live for eternity into existence. And the whole thought of being a father overwhelmed me. Uh, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I never have stopped thinking about it. From that point, not that I was a party or anything like that anyway, but from that point, all my decisions in life have been about being a father. That was well before I'd met the woman that, was the, you know, that uh, I married and I had children with. Uh, it was just that I made a decision to work three jobs uh, when I put myself through college. I didn't go to the, the parties, the drinking parties. I don't think I even had a beer until I was 21 or something like that. I just wasn't. I, my whole focus was I'm going to be a father. I need to go to school. I need to get a good job. I need to prepare a place of refuge for them. And then I remember when my children came, what a total miracle it was having uh, four children on earth here, two of which, two, two of our children, you know, we miscarried and are in heaven. But um, I just remember my, every, everything I do in life is motivated by, by taking care of my kids and wanting the best for them. And, uh, you know, so we had f four children, one girl and, and three sons. And uh, I, it just, you know, it strikes me what a blessing it is to be a father. Uh, but me being a, you know, we talk about God the Father. And it isn't that God is... Uh, God is kind of like a father. You know, we kind of use that term because we can kind of understand him. It's actually the other way around. I'm kind of like a father. God the Father is, in fact, a father. It, it says that um, God is love. And before even he created anything, it says God is love. Well, what did God love or who did God love if there was nothing to be loved? Well, um, we know that Jesus is the eternally begotten Son of the Father. And that the Holy Spirit, the early church father said, is that love between the Father and the Son. And so that uh, God is love. There's a Trinitarian uh, love there. There's actually an Ohana. There's a family there. Uh, three three uh, persons with one nature. So there's only one God, but three persons sharing that common nature. And so God is a Father. And so we have as our guest today, uh, Bob Kroll. He... Um, he has a real heart to talk about the father wound. And I know I really had a very deep father wound. It took me till I was in my 40s to finally deal with it. And I know each of my children do too, no matter how hard I tried to be the best father I could. I know each of them suffer from a wound too. And I've had conversations with each of them about stupid things I said or, or uh, dumb things I did or things I didn't do. And, um, you know, so we aren't perfect fathers, but we try our very best. And so I kind of think it'd be cool to talk about that from both perspectives. So Bob Kroll, thank you so much for being with us this, today. Thank you, Bear. It's an honor to be here. Where are you right now, by the way? I live in the city of Nina, Wisconsin. It's near Appleton, which is near Green Bay. People, most people know where Green Bay is. I've heard of Green Bay. Yes. <laughs> you know, we rode. We rode last season. Uh, we rode our motorcycles from. Washington D.C. all the way to Cleveland and over the Upper Peninsula, down by, down by Green Bay. We went to the um, the shrine there. Yes, Our Lady of Good Help. Yes, uh, you know, kneeling at the kneeling there, uh, um, it, it, 
in the shrine down in the basement where that statue is of her. Right. Yes. It's just such an incredible experience of mercy and uh, an intense uh, knowing that, you know, kind of that sense of accepting my, accepting me as I am. Yeah. Uh, but knowing that God has a beautiful plan for me. So yeah. So we drove through Wisconsin on our way to yeah. the Twin Cities. So, so you're what, what's it like there now? I know this is a, this this show is actually recorded. So this is going to be a delayed broadcast, but are you getting the fall colors yet? Yeah, we are getting the fall colors. We've got probably 60 degrees for a high today, so it's a beautiful day in Wisconsin at 60 at this time of year. But we'll be dropping to the 40s this coming weekend, so that's going to be more closely to what we experience here this time of year. Well, it feels like football weather, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, football weather for us in Hawaii is when the swell starts coming from uh, the north and swings around from the south, and the waves start coming in more from the north. That's what football weather is, is, is to us, because the temperature doesn't change too much. <laughs> but, um, you know, Bob, tell us a little bit about your own personal uh, walk with the Lord, your own personal journey. Sure. Well, <clears throat> when I, uh, I, I was the oldest of nine kids. We were raised on a dairy farm in central Wisconsin, and I had three brothers, five sisters, and uh, life was a little rough as mom and dad tried to raise the five kids on a farmer's income. And there was a lot of tension in the family, a lot of stress. Mom and dad took out some of their stress on us kids. Um, so there was a little bit of, uh, well, quite a bit of the, the emotional, verbal, and physical abuse that we went through, me and all of my siblings. And, uh, um, but, you know, times weren't all bad. Uh, there was a lot of good things that uh, took place in my childhood. One of those things that I remember is about my mother who's, who shared with me one Bible verse that was the foundation uh, for me in my Catholic faith. She shared with me <clears throat> Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus tells Peter, you are rock and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And she told me, she told me, Bobby, this means that the Catholic church is the one true church. And that stayed with me all my life, through my, my teen years, through my college years. And I, I, was, I was grounded because of what my mother explained to me in that verse. And uh, I've, I've loved my Catholic faith ever since then. And I've shared it with my kids, my wife, and I'm, I kind of am a semi, I guess, uh, amateur apologist because I share my faith any chance I get uh, with others around me. And I well, love we're my all Catholic called, faith. We're all called yes. to be Catholic apologists or Catholic That's right. That's right. Every single person is that's, that knows, knows the Lord. And you mentioned mm -hmm. your children. How many children do you have? I have four boys, ages 23, 20, 15, and 12. Wow. So is the first child out of the, out of the nest yet? He's not out of the nest, but he's getting close because he just, uh, he, last year he joined the Army Reserve. We uh, picked him up a couple months ago uh, and learned just recently that he'll be shipping out to Kuwait come this spring. And so there goes his plans to buy a house. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, so he'll be sticking with us for a little bit yet. Oh, wow. Wow, that's heavy duty. Yeah. yeah my, my son actually went to boot camp, uh, the Navy boot camp near you. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was really emotional for me when we got to go see him. Sure, here in Wisconsin, you mean? Yeah, right. For and then when he, when he came back uh, from his deployment, he was on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. And when he came back, I remember sitting in my house and in a, right at the ba base of Diamond Head and looking through my binoculars, hadn't seen him, hardly ever heard of him because it was you know, wartime, mm -hmm. hardly even heard from him. And f after a couple of hours early, I, early before sunrise, I'm up looking. I saw the, the antenna array of a ship. The beginning of the fleet was coming in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. I had the biggest lump in my throat. And then yep. got in my car, raced over to Pearl Harbor. And th they all came in all wearing their, their whites, you know, and saluting on top of the, the flight deck. But I couldn't recognize them. They all look alike. You know, all right. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, so what, a, what an honor for your son to be serving, serving, serving in that way. But it's tough. You know, when, a, when someone serves in the military, the whole family serves. That's true. Yes, we uh, we definitely have given up a lot. We spent our vacation time 
going to South Carolina to see him graduate from boot camp. And then he went on to his advanced training in Missouri. So we spent a few more days uh, traveling down there by car to pick him up after that was done. So, yeah, we, we did sacrifice some for him, but we're very proud of him as well. But what, what an amazing feeling it is to be a, uh, a father or you know, yes. to be a family. Why do we uh, love these people so much, these, these, these <laughs> children of ours? It, it's like just, you know, beyond, beyond words. Right. Um, yeah. So Bob Kroll, yeah, Bob Kroll, go ahead, Bob. Oh, I was, I was just going to say that there are times when I think about God the Father and, and how much he must love us, even in, in the way that I love my children. I love them so deeply, and I'm so imperfect, and I love them so deeply. Can you imagine how much God the Father must love us? It's incomprehensible just based upon how much I love my kids, how I would die for them. Yeah, we always tend to think of God as the one up there, the judge, God the Father. Mm-hmm. But he loves us unconditionally. But I heard it said really, really well. Uh, um, God loves you just the way you are, but loves you too much to leave you that way. Right. So he's always working with us. We're talking with Bob Kroll. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure I have to remind you, we really can you really, if you love our radio show, you need to know that EW10 doesn't provide any funding for our show. You do. And so if you're a fan of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, uh, we'd love it if you took our videos and share them with others. You can subscribe to our YouTube version of our radio show, which is really cool, by becoming a Patreon donor. If you go to Patreon uh, and search for Bear Wozniak and become a Patreon donor, you actually get the radio shows before they're even uh, aired on EWTN. And you get them in a YouTube video format. So it's so cool. You can um, actually use those to, um, to evangelize or to share with your friends or post them on Facebook. Uh, Bob Kroll, the interview we're doing today with Bob Kroll, we're actually not going to even air until Father's Day of June uh, 2020. We're, we're saving up for that, for that because of the particular topic. But if, you're, if you are a Patreon donor you get the YouTube, YouTube version of it uh, within a week or two of recording. So if you're a fan of the show, we sure appreciate that. Go to uh, uh, Patreon and, uh, and enter in the word Bear Wozniak or Deep Adventure. It'll bring you to the same place. And become a donor. Uh, you know, we really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a, a faith journey for us every day to, to, to uh, bring this show to you as far as the financial challenges we face. So thank you. So Bob. Uh, yes. you, you have how many sons? You said four. Four, yes. So have you ever uh, coached them in sports or anything like that? Yes, I sure have. Yes, uh, I <clears throat> I probably have about 15 seasons worth of coaching with baseball and football and softball and, you know, my, not only my boys, but the, their friends. And so I've spent a, a lot of time coaching um, and I love coaching. I have a, a certification in coaching from uh, my alma mater um, and so uh, I, I just love the idea of, of spending time with young men and boys and, and trying to instill the virtues and, and discipline that sports provide. Well, that, you know, every it's you have a certificate, right? But yes, right. People, anybody who has a child in a, a sport can probably, especially any man that has a son. Or, I know I'm not sure how the how the rules are, but. Anybody can go down there and help coach. Oh yeah, definitely. They always they always need help in some, and it's a great way to be around your your children, and uh, encourage them and build them up, and then also have opportunity to do that with their friends too. So that is one thing someone might be listening to right now, asking, Lord, how can I serve you? And the Lord gives you a little nudge, go become a coach. You know, I, we have a friend of ours, Ted Scarpino. He's in season two of Long Ride Home. It's pretty funny. The first episode. He's demonstrating how he, he takes his kids to Boy Scouts, to altar practice, to, to a baseball practice, to uh, martial arts. And we had his kids demonstrate martial arts on him. And I can't tell you how embarrassing uh, the moment is. And it's going to be airing for everyone in the world to see uh, when his son demonstrates a karate kick on him. <laughs> but you, have you ever had anything uh, like that happen when you're, when you're coaching? Well, I've I've done some silly things in my life, I guess, through coaching. One thing that comes to mind is, I was coach. I was an assistant coach at uh, my son's high, high school football team, and uh, we had just scored a touchdown. And I, I I'm I get pretty excited about that type of thing. I've got a lot of energy, and so I 
I ran over to the, the football stands where we've got uh, the kids, the, the high school kids and the parents and everybody, fans watching. And I jumped onto the back of the backrest of the, uh, the, the bench where the players would sit. <clears throat> and little did I know that this bench was not bolted to the ground or anything. And when I jumped onto the back of that bench, I slowly fell down. And on the bench was uh, the five gallons of Gatorade that splashed all over the ground there. And uh, the whole crowd of hundreds of people saw me do that. I felt like a fool, but I kept on cheering. <laughs> I kept on cheering for our team, and I was, it was one of those goofball moments. And uh, later that week, I got called in by the athletic director saying, I, I better tone it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, though? That's interesting because you, know you know the word enthusiasm. It means yeah. en en entheos, right? In God. Right. And, uh, you know— you got that excited over something that happened in a football game, but look at what we have in our in our Lord. Look what happens at Mass every time we go to Mass. Uh, the reality of the God who made dinosaurs uh, can become your best friend. You know, you can get to know Him in a personal way, and the God who made quasars. I mean, that's something to be excited about. Yes. Uh, well, t share with share with us now. Uh, uh, we talked about earlier uh, your special ministry and your website again is what. It's www.withallyourheart.org from Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 29, 13. You know, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find him. So are you saying you can't, you can't kind of sort of seek the Lord? You got to diligently <laughs> seek him with all your heart. Oh, yeah. Yes. You got to pour all of yourself into finding him and, and he'll, he'll, let, he'll let himself be found if you, if you really search for him. Well, do you know the, uh, that, that C.S. Lewis statement? I believe it was C.S. Lewis that said God hides himself just, mm -hmm. eno just enough so the one who wants to find him can find him, but also just enough so the one who doesn't want to find him won't find him. Sure, right. So God's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so, so tell me about um, uh, this, this uh, thing that I think we all understand. We all have experiences, we may not understand it, of the father wound. I know I have the father wound. I've experienced that it. Took a long time for me to deal with that, and I know each of my children have come to me too. I, somehow I wasn't the perfect father, or by far, and they uh, and they also have a father wound. How do we deal? Right. With, what is the father wound? Sure, um, w the father wound is pretty universal from the studies I've done on this, and it seems like the majority of people have a father wound, and the father wound. I simply say that it's the uh, the the deficiency or absence of love from one's earthly father there where where you know love is a is a thing i it's it's the sacrificial thing you do for another person for the good of another person that sacrifice of your life for someone else and fathers uh sometimes goof up they miss out they they fail they make mistakes and they say things they do things to hurt their children they fail to do things they fail to say things that they should say or do for their children and this is what causes that father wound and with us dads we try to do the best we can and sometimes we just don't and our kids will suffer from it we've suffered it from our own dads for most of us and and so i think we don't realize that we are suffering from these wounds and they affect us they affect our relationships and just to be aware that we possibly might have some father wound is the first step to, to just have that awareness. And that's, that's one thing that I want to be doing at this point right now with my ministry is letting people understand, be aware that you may have father wounds. And let's move on to the next step of the possibility of dealing with it, of overcoming it, of being healed from those wounds. And you, and you yourself... Um have experienced that. I know I have with my with yes. my earthly father. He's uh, he's become this beautiful, beautiful man. But when he was younger, he was younger. He was, yeah. Fathers are young and stupid sometimes. You know, when you may have a child when you're at my first child, I was 23. You know, and try. I'll, I'm a, I'm really just a young, young person and trying to figure out how to raise children. You know, right. And desperately trying to make money mm -hmm. to feed them and and maybe working longer hours than I want to. Coming home exhausted, beat up, and Maybe I don't have the patience I should, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but you, you had, how did you deal with your own father wound? Well, <clears throat> a friend of mine uh, who had done some uh, speaking around the area, um, 
I got to know her. Her kids went to the same school my kids did, and um, I got to know her husband. And she um, explained to me that her husband had deep father wounds, and she had connections in the Catholic world. And she introduced me to a, a, um, a retreat that was uh, being offered by a man named Dr. Bob Schutz, S-C-H-U-C-H-T-S, Dr. Bob Schutz. And in Florida, he had a retreat that he was going to be putting on with him and a few of his dear friends uh, for guys who wanted to uh, move into that masculine area of themselves and find that deeper masculinity and, and, and find out what's holding them back from becoming the great men they're meant to be and thinly disguised as a, you know, an attempt to deal with the father wound. Well, she uh, she said, you know, you and you and uh, Sean need to go on this trip. So, me and Sean uh, ended up going on this retreat, and it was a life changing thing, uh, where we we dealt with father wounds. There's about 125 of us guys there, and the question was asked by one of the leaders. Uh, the question was asked, "Hey, how many of you guys had a great relationship with your father?" And out of those about 125 guys, two guys raised their hand. The other 123 of us. Uh, we could not raise our hands because of the the relationship that was damaged with our earthly father. That's that's and so that, uh, yeah. That, that's a tremendous statement, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think we'll, we'll discover more about it when we come back from this break. But I think it's often it's not because the father didn't try his best, mm -hmm. and um, it's 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 just the only, when as a child we don't see the adversity that 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 person is dealing with and mm -hmm. all of the challenges that de they're dealing with. And the other thing is there's this big man. And the intensity of a big man, even him, even not him, that person not being very intense, can really, uh, you know, deal blows to people to to younger right. people. We're talking with Bob Kroll. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website. Uh, we've got a lot of great uh, things there for Father's Day, uh, the Warrior Rosary. We've got books. Uh, we have the Long Ride Home DVD sets, everything like that. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com. And find out more. And Bob, what is your website? With all your heart org. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to encourage you. We have like five hundred videos or maybe seven hundred videos up in up at our YouTube location, Bear Wozniak. We have our Ocean Sunrise Catechism, which I do every morning at 7 a.m. Wherever it is, it's called 7 a.m. Bear Time, whether I'm in Ireland or Hawaii, Hawaii or Israel or Florida, wherever I happen to be, at 7 a.m., I try to flip on Facebook Live, and we, we take a journey through, through the entire catechism. We're actually already starting our second time through. It took us about three years to go through the first time, but there's usually an ocean behind me. We're not just reading it, but I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, sharing thoughts about it, and then all the viewers start uh, t uh, texting in on the Facebook Live feed uh, questions or their thoughts, and there begins to be sort of a community experience there. So we want to encourage you to go and check out all our videos. We've got, uh, we've got uh, all the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows. We have over 100 of those there. We have all the Ocean Sunrise catechisms there. We have, um, oh, there's some things we do that. We have the tr some trailers and excerpts from the Long Ride Home TV show. We also have... Uh, just fun with Bear and Cindy, my wife and I. We travel and have some fun, and every now and then we like to post silly little videos. So go to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I mean, go to the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. Click subscribe and, and, and ring the little bell so that you're notified when we post something new up. We're talking with Bob Kroll, and we're talking about the father wound, and he was speaking about how he had been at a, a retreat, 125 men, and they were asked how many here would say they had a really good relationship with their dad. And of the 125 men of all ages, only two could raise their hand. That's devastating, Bob. Yeah, it is. How do, you said they helped you to deal with your own wound. How did you? How do? How do you do that? Well, uh, on this retreat, I realized what the uh, the secret of overcoming the wound is, and uh, that secret is forgiveness. Mm. When you can get to the point of forgiving your father, life changes in a dramatic way for you. Um, because 
there's this, uh, this wall that we put up. When we're wounded by someone, we want to protect ourselves. We want to protect our heart. We've been shamed. We are hurting, and we don't want to feel that pain. We don't want to feel that shame anymore. So we hide ourselves. We put on a mask. We close our hearts to others. Our relationships are rather shallow. And the thing that we need to overcome is, that that mask that we put on the the heart that's been hidden behind this wall is is the is that idea of forgiving the person who hurt us and and we've been hurt by all kinds of people dads uh moms babysitters uh other relatives bullies on the uh, on the playground lots of people have hurt us i mean that we are experts at hurting each other as human beings mm. but if we can f- get to the point of forgiveness it changes our lives. And that's what this retreat in Florida taught me to do is, is forgive my father. And so that's uh, where, where everything started turning around for me. Well, how do you, for, you know, the word forgive, uh, if you change it and say give for uh, mm-hmm. the wound, you know, when, when, you, when you're wounded by someone, forgiveness is not a passive thing. It's a proactive thing. It's a, it's a choice of the will. And we're actually been going through the catechism this week talking about uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a daunting statement. Yes, it is. For God, forgive me as I forgive others. Right. That's pretty gnarly, man. That's pretty right. gnarly. But right. how do you we, go about forgiving someone? Right. So um, for, for, for my, my personal forgiveness journey towards my dad, the person who guided me through this, uh, he was a, his name was Mario uh, on this retreat. And we, we took some time off, uh, just the two of us, and we, we went through um, what, what's really I found out later was called Inner Healing Ministry, where he, mm. he, uh, he asked me to speak about all the times that I had been hurt by my father and, uh, and, and all the emotions that were involved, you know, the pain, the shame, the, the uh, embarrassment, the hurt everything that was bottled up, the anger that was there. And all those emotions were released. And, and, and Mario explained to me how that my father was probably wounded as well. And so I looked at, started looking at it at, from a different perspective of, you know, my dad was hurt as well. So how can I um, realize that you know, if I'm hurt, he's hurt, we're all hurting. Let's look at it from his perspective and, and let's let's perhaps offer forgiveness. You know, you look at my life, I've screwed up with my own kids how many times? Hundreds and hundreds of times. And and so if I want to be forgiven by my own children, I probably need to take a step in the right direction and forgive my own dad. So Mario helped me to understand that I need to forgive by putting my basically putting my uh, my feet in my dad's shoes. Mm. Well, I just remember too, for me, it, it, going through that father wound, that healing time, it would always just, there was just this pain of, re- for me, mm-hmm. it was rejection of not spending any time with me mm-hmm. and then being, and then I, I was always afraid when my dad came home because I didn't know what dad was going to show up. Usually it was an angry dad, you know? And, right. and, and I look at that and I go, so when I was going through the season of healing, which is something that I remember they lived on the island of, on Mol- Molokai, and I went and visited my dad, and I said, you and I need to go take a walk. And I talked to them, and I said, I just want you to tell you, and this is when I was probably 40 or so, mm-hmm. what it was like from my perspective of what, of what our relationship was like. And his initial response was, get over it. Mm-hmm. You know, because that generation, his own father was an alcoholic and, and abusive. You know, uh, He saw things that, that kind of jaded him. And... Uh, I said, didn't that ever bother you? He goes, no, didn't bother me. <laughs> but then why are you so mean to me? Or why are you the absent father? So, it, 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 so there's that, that older generation, just like the Clint Eastwood, you know, just, just shut up and eat your gravy, you, you know, take, take your wild oats or whatever. Right. I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah. yeah, so we have to come to grips with this. And at some point, did you ever talk to your own father about it? Yeah, great question. And, and just to, to tag on what you just said there about – uh, you know, deal with it, get over it. You know, I've heard that said before, but you just it you just don't get over this. This is something that is lodged in our hearts that needs the Holy Spirit's help to get us out of this mess. And so when someone says get over it or, you know, 
it's not that big a deal. It is a big deal, and it and and we need help from others because God has given us others within our lives to help bring healing to us. Mm. And and so you you want to be able to deal with this. And and for me, I was blessed to be able to get it over with in a huge way on that retreat on one weekend. Sometimes for us, it takes a while. There's a season, like you mentioned, Bear, where it could be a long time before we get, overcome something like this. But um, I guess I forgot the question. That we're... But you know, the thing <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, you know, my father, that conversation I had with him, yeah, oh, yeah. confronting him, I said, mm-hmm. and I just went through a series of memories. There were these memories that just would be like hooks, like claws in my chest, you know, just ripping mm-hmm. me open. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I just went through all these memories. And at the end, he finally said, wow, is that how you felt? Is that what I did? I don't even remember that. And to me, it yeah. was like the worst moment of my life. Right. I did that. I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so then eventually he got very humble and asked for forgiveness. By that time, he had, he was, he had become a deacon in the Catholic Church and had, had a spiritual awakening, but it still hadn't changed the pain in my heart until I talked with him. And then, you know, my, my own sons have had times like that, too. And they go, you remember when you did this? I go, I didn't do that. <laughs> or uh, sometimes, actually, it is true. It's like the, the child misunderstands or misinterprets. Right. But nevertheless, I think if you can have a conversation, once you've found out where those father wounds are and what the essence of it is, to have a conversation with your father is, is gnarly, man. But if you can do that, do that. Yeah, right. And 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 my my way of dealing with my dad and, and letting him know about how I felt was the, the priest on that weekend. I, there was a, a great priest there, Father Cecil. And he asked me to write a letter to my dad. Yeah. And so I did write a letter. I wrote a letter. And, and sometimes letters are even better than even speaking because you can put it down. You can think about what you're going to say. And, and it's there. Uh, Much in, better. In, in Much print. better. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I did. I, I wrote a three and a half page letter to my dad. I said, Dad, these are the things you did to me. This is what I felt when you did them to me, the pain and all the hurt that was there. And and then I ended up saying in that letter, Dad, I love you. Dad, I forgive you. And, you know, he read that letter. I sent it to him. Thank goodness I was blessed to have Dad still alive so we could reconcile. Yeah. He read this letter, and uh, it took for it took him a while to to open up because I think he had to contemplate for a while about what I had said in this in this powerful letter to him, and he started changing things in his life uh, towards us. And he started really thinking and he started talking to me about, hey, I, I really goofed up. I'm sorry what I did. I feel really bad. And so things began to change with him that because yeah, of that. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about that is you're confronting someone, uh, confronting him like that also gave him a chance to be, to heal. Right. Right. And to, and to deal with his own issues with his own father. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not time to bury those things uh, under the rug. But it needs to be done in a beautiful, uh, contemplative way, maybe with the help of, of your priest or a spiritual director. But writing a, a letter like that is very powerful. But then what I would ask you, what I would do, is when I sent that to, the, to my father, I would say, read this, contemplate it, read it again, read it again, mm-hmm. and then burn it because I've forgiven mm-hmm. you. Yeah. We're talking mm-hmm. with Bob Kroll about the father wound. I don't know anyone that hasn't had, to some degree or another, an experience of the Father, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. We want to encourage you to go to uh, iTunes or Amazon Prime Video, Google Play, YouTube. Guess what? Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, our motorcycle uh, adventure series is airing on those channels so you can go there and power watch them or if you want to you can go to uh patreon and search bear wasnick or deep adventure and you can donate and when you do that you get to get all of the all of the long ride home tv shows all of season one all of season two in every single uh, episode we have 36 in the can that we're still editing every episode as we get the director's cut done even before ewtn sees it you get to have that too Plus, all of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows are all, there's video versions of all of them. And our radio show tends to air about two to three to six months after we've done the recording because we're trying to be proactive and get our work done, you know, be faithful. 
And so, but you can get uh, the radio show, the video, the YouTube version of the radio show, uh, the video, uh, months before it even airs on EWTN. So go to Patreon, uh, Bear, search for Bear Wozniak or Deep Adventure, become a Patreon donor. We would sure appreciate it. We're talking with Bob Kroll, and we're talking about the the father wound. Um, so you you had that occasion to write that letter to your father. Yes. Uh, have you ever had conversations like that with your own children, the other side of the fence? Yes, I have. And, uh, you know, during this retreat, I, I, I want to share this little story here. Um, Mario, uh, a Catholic uh, family and uh, marriage therapist, uh, walked me through the healing process. And at one point during this, this, po- this process, I, I saw a vision of me in the middle with my, my oldest son, Kyle, to the right of me, my dad to the left of me. And it was flashing back and forth between my dad, my son, me, my son, dad, you know, back and forth quickly. And I realized that the wounds that dad had caused me, I was now inflicting on my son, my son, Kyle. And it came to me that I used to hug my dad if I had to hug him, if I was going somewhere, I would, you know, as in my teen years, if I was leaving for Cal or, or, or leaving for uh, somewhere, or I would hug him, but my fists were closed when I hugged him. So I really wasn't, didn't mm-hmm. mean a whole lot. I just kind of went through the motion. I realized that my teenage son, Kyle, was now hugging me in the same way with his fists. Wow. And so that was a powerful moment for me to realize that now here I am, another generation of wounding going on here. And so that realization came to me. And uh, um, now that uh, now that I had that letter written to my dad, um, I can realize that um, uh, his wounding was caused by his father, uh, that came to me now I'm doing it to my own kids and that generational thing just keeps on going and and to break that cycle uh is something I needed to do so I've talked to my kids I told <laughs> there are times when I will goof up and say hey I I uh you know I'll say something or do something to them that I should not have done and and they'll say dad you just they'll say dad you just gave me a father wound so <laughs> they uh, they understand uh, because we've talked about this. My son Jason, who wears his uh, heart on his sleeve, he's just a, a wonderful child. He's my third oldest. Um, I walked through a, a, a healing. Uh, I've, I've been I've had some training in healing ministry, so I walked a, a healing session with him, and uh, he told me one time, like you mentioned, there's there's times we just hurt our children we don't remember, and. When I when I told him, hey, co- go back to some times when I was hurting you, Jason, and he said, Dad, there was one time when I was just a little baby, and I, I poured uh, baby powder all over your and mom's bed, and then you yelled at me, and you pushed me, and, and you were angry at me, and I said, Jason, did I do that? I could barely remember doing that, mm-hmm. and I said, Jason, did I do that? I'm so sorry, and I start, I just broke down crying. He was crying, and... um. And it was a life changing moment for him because he had there was there was something not right with him at at that at he was probably eight or nine years old and he was so angry all the time and he would cry very easily at the littlest of things. And after I had gone through that and we we prayed a prayer of forgiveness of him, I asked him to forgive me and uh, it just changed him. Mm-hmm. Just that that uh, that moment that we spent of, of grieving and then redeeming through that forgiveness with him. It was you a know, beautiful from a, thing. From a baby's point of view, too, you may have spoke, you may have raised your voice, but he called it yelling because he's a little oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> right. uh, you might he, you pushed me over. Might have been you g- getting him off the bed so you could clean things up, but not in the most right. loving way, you know. And right. so there's that misperception, but uh, but usually, you know, there's something there's something there uh, mm-hmm. that they've they've picked up some anger or some um, sense of shame from someone or or losing your dignity right. with your father. So we we what what action steps should people take if they're listening to this they realize they're carrying a father wound and they're concerned that they may have uh, caused father wounds what what action steps would you recommend right for them? yeah the first thing is to admit that you may have been wounded to to have this awareness that there could be something underneath and you're you're putting on this mask all these years and uh you're you're 
now you realize that there might be something there. Why are my relationships? Why can't I get along with my wife? Why do I burst into anger at the slightest of thing? What there's triggers out there that, that get me so angry. What is this caused by? And oftentimes it's something in our past. And so realization is the first step. The second step is, is, uh, having that, uh, desire to want to forgive that person who hurt you, to want to forgive your father. And it could take a while to get to that point because the wounds can be so deep. But you want to get to that point of, of, of saying, yes, I choose to forgive. It's a, it's a choice of the will. And so if you can choose to forgive, you are almost there. So offer that forgiveness. Your father might not be around anymore. He may have passed away you can still offer that forgiveness to your father. You can still write a letter. You may, he may never mm. see it because he's gone, but still write that letter. Get those emotions out in the open and offer forgiveness, whether he's alive or not. If he's alive, great. Give that letter to him. If he's not, you know, maybe go visit his grave site mm. and say, Father, Dad, I forgive you. These are the times you hurt me, but I choose to forgive you. And you will have a life-changing experience if you can if you can get to that point. You know, Colossians three thirteen tells us that we we must forgive each other. We have to. And if you go to if you want to be in heaven, and you have not forgiven someone, you're not getting in yet. So we have to forgive everyone, just like the Our Father tells us: forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. We have to do it. Now, there's so a that's thing, the advice. Something yeah. here. The thing about that is um, forgiveness is a proactive thing. In mm -hmm. fact, when someone offends you, it's, it's an appointment uh, for you to pray for that person. Yes. And so forgiveness is, uh, oh, uh, you know, you, is, a, is a will. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may still not feel that loving towards them, but you've begun the process. You know, I always say emotions are the caboose. The engine is, uh, is, mm -hmm. is your faith in God and, and you're and your, mm -hmm. your surrendering your will to him. That's what drives the right. train, yep. uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And God will come alongside you and help you in that. Being able to forgive someone will radically change not just your life, but those people, your, your children, other people's lives. But that isn't to say that there's an abusive person, abusive parent, that uh, I used to make the mistake of forgiving and forgetting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think for the most part that isn't a, a bad thing. But I, I, eventually I've learned that there are some people that I, I can forgive but I shouldn't forget. I should mm -hmm. draw a boundary and say you're no longer allowed in my life. Or my Absolutely. Life. So right. We're that's, not saying to be pushovers, but go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's that's so very true. Uh, offering forgiveness is your choice, and reconciliation may never take place. You may not ever talk to that person. You may have to put up a boundary, but if you can do your part of forgiving, that's what really matters. And you, you may never ever forget either. There's a lot of pain there, mm -hmm. but forgiveness is where we want to get to, even though you may never forget it. Um, as long as that forgiveness is there, that's what matters. Right. And every time you feel that pain from that, that's your nudge from the Holy Spirit to pray for that person and tell yeah. really eventually that you, you, you do want to see God, God bless them. And then the right. other and thing it, is yeah. we need to go and seek forgiveness with our, from our, our own children. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is you go, you know, when you were younger, I wasn't the father that I could have been. I wronged you in this way and this way and this way and this way. And I need to ask you, will you forgive me? You don't say... If when I did this, it hurt you, because now you're demeaning them to be weaklings and getting easily hurt. Mm -hmm. You say, when I did this, and I did this, and I did this, I was wrong, and, I, and, and I'm sorry, and I want to ask you, will you forgive me? And you stop there. Right. And, you and the wait. virtue, yeah. yeah, the virtue of humility is a wonderful thing to have in order to be able to do this mm -hmm. and, and just say, hey, I messed up. And I am so sorry. Please forgive me. You know, the relationship I had with my dad now, he's still alive. Praise the Lord. He's still alive. And we talk on the phone two or three times a week. And yeah. he's, he's funny. We have a great relationship. It's a wonderful thing that I've been blessed with. And, and you know, there's when I do my talks around, mm -hmm. around the country, I, I have to bring up a couple examples of some things that dad did that weren't so great. And, and I said, Dad, I'm going to be speaking about some of these not so good things. Right. And, and I asked him on, on Easter Sunday of 2015, I said, Dad, is that okay if I talk about this? And he, he didn't say anything. He just made the sign of the cross, and he gave me his fatherly blessing. Wow, that what, is what so a, amazing. Yeah, what a, what a step in humility that he 
had to do in order to allow me to speak on this. And he's heard my talk, and, and I'm so very proud of my dad. I just love my dad. I'm yeah, so my, grateful. My dad and I, too, I finally got him hooked on cigars. <laughs> you know, and now we, whenever I'm with him, we'll, we'll have a cigar. But now I support the habit. You know, it's a $200 a month habit. <laughs> We're talking with Bob Kroll. Where can they find you again, Bob? With allyourheart.org. Allyourheart.org. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you for joining us. Uh, until next time, hey, don't forget, subscribe below if you're watching this on video and click and ring the little bell so that you get notified when we roll up new, uh, new, new shows. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit Aloha, you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasnick.com.